Tom, what were your feelings on how the 2022 season ended? Uh, it didn't end well. Yeah. Um, it's hard, you know, losing playoff games, it's, it's painful. Um, and it really doesn't matter how far you go, it's just a painful experience. And then obviously the way we lost the game, it just stings a little bit more. So um, I know we do need to reflect back on, you know, we were a 10 win team um, that qualified for the playoffs, you know, two weeks early. Um, but, uh, you know, you always remember your last game. So, you know, we have a long off season to try and figure this out. Um, but uh, it's just tough. And, the, and I mentioned it before, you know, you, we represent so many people. You feel like you let people down because we felt like we had a really good football team that we can make a run in the playoffs. And when you don't get there, um, you just got that sinking feeling. Um, but luckily, we're people that love to work and love to build and love to fight and get back. And, um, you know, you just you rise and you fight again. That's just kind of our mentality. Like we got knocked down and we got bloodied a little bit, but we'll be back up and ready to go. That's, we've already started that. Um, you know, the last couple of days. Mm -hmm. So, um, but uh, yeah, it didn't end well, but there were some good things that happened during the season. You can't win 10 games in this league and not have some positives. Um, and we'll look at all those in the off season and get ready for next year. You mentioned some of the work that's been done. There have been some changes already. How did you go about evaluating those with the staff? Yeah, anytime you make adjustments with the assistant coaching staff, you know, you got to have a sense of urgency with that. So we had to really get on that as soon as the season was over. And you really, and it had nothing to do with one specific game. It wasn't like we lost a playoff game, so we're making changes. You have to look at the whole season of where we are, where we're going to go. And um, on the offensive side of the ball, we just felt like we're going to try a different vision, a different approach. Um, you know, Joe Lombardi, Shane Day, they did a really good job for us. I don't want to discount that. Um, two years ago, our offense was in top five in a lot of categories. This year we took a little bit of a step back, um, not necessarily because of them, um, but I think we wanted to have a different vision and uh, a little different style of offense and uh, just trying to improve and get better. What gives you confidence in Brandon Staley? If you're in the building with him every day, you can't help but to be confident. He has great leadership skills. He's detail oriented, which is really important as a head coach. As I mentioned in the press conference, he's a fighter. And um, in this league, you need to have that edge. That's the type of person I want to go into competition with. And he's getting, he's got nothing but improving. As a, it's a tough, a head coach is a tough job. Yeah. <laughs> Just like when I became general manager, I'd never done the job before. Uh, there was a learning curve. There's no doubt. And everybody's pointed it out to me. And I've seen the same thing. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's a lot that goes into it. And you get better as you go. Um, but, you know, he, we've had two winning seasons back to back. Went to the playoffs this year. We just did not get as far as we wanted to this year. But um, you now Brandon has a vision for how he wants to play. Um, we're completely in line with that. And uh, we're excited to work this offseason. Looking at the offensive coordinator position, you've had a few during your time here, experienced ones like Ken Wisenhunt, Frank Reich, Shane moved into that position as sort of a younger guy. What do you look for in that role? Well, we're going to take a pretty wide look at it because I don't think you want to limit yourself to saying, you know, this is, this is a small box of what we're looking for. So whether it's a long time experienced play caller or maybe a coach who's on the rise, I think you're looking for different traits and characteristics like leadership ability, ability to teach and communicate with players, um, be able to handle stressful situations, which you can imagine as a play caller and make quick, efficient decisions and how you interact with your staff. Um, those are all things we're looking for. And then obviously the other big part of that is the X's and O's part of it, of the style of offense you want to run, how you're going to run it, and how it fits the players that we have. Because what we can't do is bring in any coach for offensive defense and then have 11 new starters on offensive defense. It really can't work like that. Now we can start moving to the strengths of what that offense is, but how are you going to use the players that we have? So that's a big part of the interview process. What about the strengths of Justin Herbert now as he gets into his fourth season? For quarterbacks, the the more you play, the more you study other defenses, the more you know other coordinators, the more you know other players and how, how they play. You have a library in your head and you just, with experience, you get better and better. You know, all the talent is there and all the work I think is there. So it's, it's, now it's just, it's just playing and experience. And uh, you would never want to put a ceiling on him because he's just so gifted. You know, but we also have to challenge him to keep getting better, which is a pretty easy challenge because uh, he's a perfectionist. He just wants to get better and he wants to be coached. And, but we also have to remember, it's not just him on offense. We have an offensive line that needs to run and pass block. We need backs that can run and catch the ball and receivers that can separate and get open and tight ends that can do all of that, what I just talked about. So it's not just about him, it's about putting everybody around him that can play well. Before this season started, you would describe the 2021 group as resilient. How would you describe the 2022 Chargers team? I'm not, am I allowed to use the same word? Sure. 
because you know there's a lot they went through this year there is yeah and and we have the caliber of people here that can handle that because you're not going to go through a season like seashells and balloons it just doesn't work like that game to game week to week things are going to happen on the field off the field and the one the word i'd use in training camp with the team is no matter what happens we won't flinch mm -hmm. we can't flinch that's not how we operate um, and that's kind of what happened this year we had some challenging situations um, and we never flinched through any of that, um, which makes that second half against Jacksonville so frustrating because that, that was not us this year. We had some really tough situations, some stressful situations this year because um, of the caliber of people we have. Um, and uh, that's kind of our mentality moving forward is that we, we, we're not going to flinch no matter what happens. The D word depth has been used a lot during your tenure here, but you saw a lot of guys step up and need to step up. What did you see from some of those guys this last year? You know, it was a combination this year of, of depth and coaches making adjustments to help that. And uh, we had so many players, like w without some players that probably were not slated to play a lot of snaps, then it had to play a lot. Without them, we would not have gotten the 10 wins or gotten in the playoffs. And, and I can rattle off a lot of names that really had to step in and play maybe a bigger role than anticipated, maybe a role that wasn't anticipated. Uh, we had some players on our team at the end of the year that weren't even with us in week seven or eight or nine that were playing in a playoff game. So you have to have more than just some stars on both sides of the ball. You really have to have some high level role players that can handle different roles um, and a coaching staff that is really um, flexible enough, which we are to be able to be able to handle that. And uh, that's that's the thing that gets lost sometimes is, is the coaching staff and all the adjustments they have to make during the week. I mean, there's some weeks and this is with every team, not just us. You might not know till Friday if a certain player is going to play. So you have to have a couple of different game plans of how you're going to attack things based on who's going to play. And uh, the really good coaching staffs do that, and, and our guys did that this year. Offensively, I know you mentioned it's not just Justin, it's all those guys working together. But what really needs to happen to unlock the potential of that group? Well, I think we've seen it already. Um, you know, we, our offense can move the ball and put up a lot of yards. But there's just some, some small areas that need improvement. Um, as little as is goal to goal situations and, and getting touchdowns, not field goals, that's, which is so important, especially in the playoffs. It's little things like that. But we, we have the capability here to kind of take it to the next level, which is why we're making the changes that we are. Um, but it doesn't come easy, it doesn't come overnight. And we also know the exact personnel and offense we had this year, it won't be the exact same thing next year. That's just the way it is in this league. Things kind of turn over. So, um, we'll make sure the personnel fits what we're running on offense and we'll let it ride from there. Defensively, where do you want to see that unit take a jump? I'm expecting when we get the training camp that we'll hit the ground running. I think this year was, we knew to be a bit of a transition with a lot of new faces on defense. So we've established that a little bit. These guys have been here working together more with each other and you know, take a little bit bigger step. Now we, got some, we know there's some specific areas we need to hit harder. Um, our first down defense, our third and long defense. Um, what I really saw was in December, like the defense take a huge jump against some pretty good people um, and see what we're capable of. We do that more consistently now, which I feel pretty good about for next year. Financially, slightly different situation than last off season. How does that affect your approach now going into this off season? So the process is exactly the same. The approach will be different just based on, you know, where our cap is this year in relation to last year. Not, nothing we haven't handled before. This is the way all teams operate. Each year is a different situation. Um, and you manage it appropriately. So the process stays the same. Um, this free agency may look different than last year's, but you never know. We'll kind of see how it, how it shakes out, but we're so early in the planning process right now, it's hard to give a specific answer with that, but uh, this is kind of natural in this league. And then lastly, Brandon Staley had said, the way that we had finished down the stretch shows you all the things that we're excited about moving forward. For you, what are some of those things? Well, we talked about resiliency and, and you know, we're not going to flinch when things get tough. And uh, we saw that this year when we were six and six and playing a really hot Miami team at home it was a big game. Tremendous crowd, by the way. It was a huge crowd, loud. And our guys, you know, came to play one of our best games of the year as far as both sides of the ball. Um, there's just so much to build on. I'm so excited about our special teams this year, how they played. Um, of our three units, they were the most consistent group of the three, and that was from week one to week 17. That's surprising to you? In all facets. I don't want to say that, <laughs> I but, know. It, but it's, uh, I'm just proud of that group. Yeah. But to really get to where we need to go with this group, personnel-wise and, and coaching-wise, was, was exciting to see because they really affected games um, on, in a positive way almost every single week. 
And uh, that's how you win in this league. It's not just scoring points. It's not just shutting people down on defense. you got to win on special teams as well. We saw that, and uh, it's exciting to see. It really is. Thanks, Tom. All right. Sounds good. If you want to see more content like this, check out the link right here. <laughs>